Have you ever wanted to play games like Genshin Impact on the Steam Deck OLED? Or maybe Minecraft? Or maybe even Fortnite? Well, now you can, thanks to Valve, because recently they released new Windows drivers for the Steam Deck OLED, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how Windows 11 performs on this device. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out Windows 11 on the Steam Deck OLED. Now, personally, I won't have this installed as my main operating system, but there's nothing wrong with it. If this is what you want, you can definitely install Windows now, but there are a few drawbacks here and there. If you head over to the official Steam Deck Windows resource page, I'll leave a link in the description, uh, Valve states that they're unable to offer Windows on deck, but you will need these drivers if you wanted to run Windows on this machine. After all, it's basically just an x86 PC. The APU driver, SD card reader, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and audio. There is a major drawback when it comes to audio. Uh, it's not working over the speakers yet, so you will have to use the 3.5mm audio jack or Bluetooth right now. Not sure if this will be fixed soon or if it'll ever be fixed. For all of my testing, I've been using the 3.5mm audio jack just so we can hear what's going on. But this is something I've definitely been wanting to test on the uh, Steam Deck OLED for a while now. We've got that faster RAM and beautiful OLED display. So since these drives are available, I figured we'd go ahead and test it out and run some games that we normally can't run in Linux at least very easily, like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. We're going to test out some Fortnite. Minecraft is pretty easy to get up and running in Linux, but we're going to test that also, along with a couple other games that I normally play on the Steam Deck just to check out the performance here in Windows 11 on the OLED. Moving in just a bit closer to get a look at everything, as you can see we've got that custom AMD APU, 4 cores, 8 threads, up to 3.5 GHz in the OLED, 16 gigs of LP DDR5 at 6400, and of course the custom AMD GPU, and from the BIOS I've just set 4 gigs of VRAM here. Since the OLED screen does go up to 90 hertz, basically that's the only option we have here on the built-in screen. If we're doing HDMI over USB Type-C, we can go 30, 60, up to 120 that I found so far, at least with the adapter I have. And having Windows installed here works pretty decently on this system. I mean, you could use this as an everyday PC. Trackpads will work, but one of the main issues a lot of people run into is the built-in controller here isn't recognized as like an Xbox controller. So for the most part, if we wanted to play Genshin Impact, Fortnite, other games that aren't in Steam, we will have to add them as a non-Steam game so we can have Steam handle those inputs. That way we can use the built-in controller. But you know, it's pretty easy to get everything up and running. And since this is really the first time I'm testing Windows on the Steam Deck OLED, I did run a couple benchmarks. Like Geekbench 6, single core, 1,432, multi, 4,503. I also ran a couple 3D Mark tests, Night Raid, 16,091, and I also ran Time Spy, we're getting a 1,783. And remember, we're locked at a 15 watt TDP here with the Steam Deck OLED. At 15 watts, this isn't too bad, but you know, just to put it into perspective for you, on the new ROG Ally X at a 17 watt TDP, which is its performance mode in Windows 11, we're looking at a little over 2100 total score here with Time Spy on the ROG Ally X. So obviously with Windows 11 installed on the Steam Deck OLED, we're not going to win any synthetic benchmark awards, but let's see how this thing handles real world gaming. First up, we've got Genshin Impact 800p low settings, and for the most part, it actually performs pretty decently at 60 FPS. Of course, we could jack these settings up to high and run this at 30, but I wanted to see if the OLED could handle it at 60, and it's actually doing a pretty decent job here. Every once in a while, we do get some dips, but overall, it's definitely playable on the OLED with Windows 11 installed. I'll race you there! The next one I wanted to test here was Minecraft. This is the Windows version, non-Java, and of course in Linux and SteamOS you can always install the Java version if you want to. I have the refresh rate set to 90 Hz and I've actually locked it down inside of the game. We're at 25 chunks, fancy graphics is on, and it does run pretty decently. Of course Minecraft isn't a super hard game to run, but thousands and thousands of people play it so I figured I'd show it off in this video.
Fortnite 800p low settings, DirectX 12 back in. I also went through and tested DirectX 11. I also tested the low performance mode, but that just kind of takes us down to 30 FPS. I will admit, I personally don't play this game. And overall, it's not too bad, but we do encounter some stutters. And in the past, I've tested this on much more powerful units, seeing kind of the same stutters. So I think it's just shaders caching. And with this lower end RDNA 2 based iGPU, it's going to take a little longer to cache those shaders. I'm sure if I played through for a little longer in this area here, we could clear all of that up. But for the most part, we had an average of 71 FPS. Moving over to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 using the built in benchmark. Low settings, 800p, FSR is set to balanced, and I am using NVIDIA's frame gen, so with this we are using FSR 3. Not bad at all, I mean, we've got a pretty steady 60. By the end of this, we actually had an average of 62 FPS, but our 1% lows were pretty low. And I do have this set to 90 hertz in the settings, but for some reason during gameplay, it locks itself to 60. Screen on this up to 90 hertz in Windows, that's what I got it set to and in the game. Little odd there, and even in the menu it does jump up past 60, so I'm not sure what's going on here. But as you can see, we had an average of 62, and our 1% low was sitting at 28. And I do think this has a lot to do with using the uh, AMD's frame gen, and this is from within game, it's not from the AMD settings or anything like that. And I should mention that this is one of those games that preloads the shaders in Windows, it took 36 minutes to preload the shaders here. I actually had to do it three times. I definitely had to test out Forza Horizon 5. This is a game that always gives me issues inside of Linux. Obviously, it's made by Microsoft. I'm sure they're doing more optimizations over here in Windows. And yeah, we are seeing better performance in Windows on the Steam Deck. I knew this would be the case. You know, I've tested it in the past on the older LCD Steam Deck with Windows. And on some other handhelds, I'm seeing anywhere from an 18 to a 32 FPS increase going from Linux over to Windows with this game, depending on your hardware. But there is one game here that does perform better in Linux than on Windows with these handhelds, and that's Cyberpunk 2077. CD Projekt Red did put a lot of work in kind of optimizing for the Steam Deck, and I think that has a lot to do with it. We're at 720p, low settings, FSR is set to performance, and what I want to do here is just turn VSync on, just to see if that helps out with any kind of screen tearing. But for the most part, we're seeing an average of around 41 FPS. And on the Steam Deck with these same settings, I can actually see around 53 FPS on average. That's not the Steam Deck preset. We're using low settings here. So yeah, when it comes to this game on the Steam Deck, I'd much rather play it in Steam OS. So in the end, is it worth installing Windows 11 on your Steam Deck OLED? Personally, I don't think so, but you know, if you have a certain use case scenario where you absolutely have to have Windows, then yeah, you could definitely get by with something like this. Unfortunately, sound isn't working from the speakers right now. You will have to use that 3.5 millimeter audio jack or even Bluetooth, but you could get by doing something like this if you absolutely have to have Windows installed. For me, what I did was just use a separate drive to install Windows on, that way I didn't wipe my main drive here. I can just reinstall it, I've got SteamOS ready to go, and the main draw to that is just the optimizations they've done. Great battery life with the Steam Deck OLED, constant updates, and everything that I really want to play does work inside of Linux. Of course, you will run into some games that just aren't compatible over there on Linux, and there are some workarounds for certain games, but there's still some that you just can't play in Linux, and I really think that the developers are missing out. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Is this something you've been waiting for? Are you going to install Windows on your Steam Deck OLED? Leave Steam OS. And if you absolutely have to have it, I will leave links in the description. You can head over to Valve's official website to pick those drivers up. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, Thanks for watching.